हेलो एवरी वन सो टूडे वील बी डिस्कसिंग इन द ट्रबल शूट सीरीज ए पी एच वट दिस ट्रबल शूट सीरीज इज बेसिकली हेयर वी डोंट फोकस ऑन द टॉपिक्स ऑन द सब टॉपिक्स विच यू नो हेयर वी फोकस ऑन द कंसेप्ट द सब टॉपिक्स विच यू डोंट नो ओके इन विच यू ऑलवेज गेट मिस्टेक्स ओके सो लेट स्टार्ट दिस ए पी एच द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ ऑब्स्टेट्रिक्स यू विल डेफिनेटली गेट वन और टू क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक okay so without a further ado let's start it so what is basically aph aph is bleeding from the genital organs after 28 weeks okay why 28 weeks because after 28 weeks the fetus is viable we can save the fetus if we do proper management and if uh, after 28 weeks the placenta is such a large that if bleeding occurs from this placenta then mo mother can be in problem so after 28 weeks both fetal and maternal distress is very common with bleeding so that is why here we are saying that aph is a bleeding which can cause distress to both the mother and the fetus and if the bleeding occurs before 28 weeks it is a threatened abortion and by that only fetus is lost not the Uh, mother is not in distress okay so there are three reasons of uh, uh, aph placenta previa abruption placenta and was a previa i know you all of you know this let's discuss abruption so first of all here i would like to tell you that you all know what is placenta in placenta the uh, there are, there is spiral arteries which are the branches of uterine arteries right uterine artery supplies the mother uterus and then uterine artery sub branch supplies the spiral arteries isn't it now this spiral artery it enters the placenta 15 16 spiral arteries it and they enters the placenta and then at 20 weeks the tunica media of this spiral arteries is removed by the extra villus trophoblast and yes we studied in last time only that if this tunica media is not removed then the patient will uh, spiral arteries will go into vasospasm and patient will have preeclampsia perfect okay so now when the spiral arteries they uh, uh, the tunica media is removed on the both side of one spiral artery there is the chorionic villi which is the fetal vessels right so now Uh, this this arrangement is so that there is a, a good uh, nutrient uh, nutrients can go from mother to the uh, uh, fetus by uh, diffusion and all this process nutrient exchange occurs and then uh, then uh, uh, then oxygen exchange occurs all that exchange which occurs during the placenta is possible because of this Uh, connection okay now what happen when this spiral artery tears then when this spiral artery will tear up then the uh, bleeding will be there in the placenta right and placenta will start separating usually the placenta separates after the delivery of the fetus right but if the placenta separates before the delivery of the fetus then it is known as abruption placenta okay now the spiral arteries had steered there is bleeding and now what will happen you tell me there will be bleeding between the endometrium and between the placenta right now uh, first of all let us see the risk factors now you tell me what all conditions will lead the spiral artery to tear okay that all condition will be the risk factor so as already we discussed it now that the uh, in preeclampsia there is vasospasm and due to the vasospasm all the inflammatory cytokines which cause vaso uh, vaso constriction are there because you know that thromboxane a2 increases the uh, vaso dilator prostaglandin i2 it de decreases and thromboxane a2 it increases so all the all the uh, agents which causes uh, 
thromboxin A2 vasoconstriction they tear the you know that uh, hypertension spasm it causes endothelial damage that is what we study in uh, pathology versho triads isn't it so all those things they tear the placenta so preeclampsia is a major factor which uh, tears the placenta whenever there is a over distended uterus matlab uterus is much more distended फूला हुआ है बहुत ज़्यादा फूला हुआ है तो वो तो उसकी वजह से स्पाइरल आर्टरीज दे आल्सो स्ट्रेच बिकॉज यूट्रस इज डिस्टेंडेड मच मोर देन रिक्वायर्ड देन द स्पाइरल आर्टरीज दे फील अ स्ट्रेच एक खिंचाव फील होता है स्पाइरल आर्टरीज को जिसकी वजह से वो टीयर हो जाती हैं वट आज द रीजन ऑफ ओवर डिस्टेंडेड यूट्रस पॉलीहाइड्रोमिनोस मल्टीपल प्रेगनेंसीज मैक्रोसोमिया okay these all are the causes so all this will also lead to the tear of the spiral arteries infection just as we studied in vasospasm there are inflammatory cytokines the vasoconstrictor cytokines in the similar way in the infection also there are inflammatory cytokines which leads to the spiral artery tear okay now next is thrombophilia in thrombophilia diseases there is thrombosis and that is why uh, there is thrombosis in the veins and that is why uh, there is this problem okay uh, this uh, spiral arteries they tear after thrombosis now you all know a uh, multiparous lady uh, and elderly gravida lady these ladies they have their problem in vessels the vessels they have a atherosclerosis they are uh, more lipid deposition in the vessels so that is why elderly and multi multiparous they are also prone to uh, the abruption okay so here they ask you question okay all these causes you remember you don't remember keep elderly multiparous please remember it question come on this thing whether they are asking of placenta previous risk factor or whether they are asking of uh, abruption placenta risk factor they ask always ki whether it is common in primary gravida or not please all the problems all the ops problems whether it is pph aph whatever except preeclampsia all these problems are common in multi gravida okay only preeclampsia is Uh, uh common in primary gravida but rest all the problems are common in multi gravida okay one more problem which is common in primary gravida is occipito posterior position okay uh, if we leave all this condition in all the other condition the multi gravida is the risk factor okay so now from today onwards you are going to learn this and you are not going to forget this okay okay now let's see the another problem is cocaine you all know cocaine affects the arteries for the smoking affects the endothelium of the arteries and folic acid deficiency okay once again what are the risk factors the risk factors is as abruption preeclampsia uh, of the risk factor of abruption is preeclampsia in infection because both of these they lead to release of inflammatory cytokines over distended uterus and thrombophilia uh, diseases last in the last it is elderly multiparous very important factor this is the factor which you always forgot cocaine smoking and folic acid deficiency next is what is the pathology now we all have understood that spiral artery tears present as separate premature what is abruption so what happens if spiral arteries tear this this slide is very important to solve the clinical uh, situations which they give okay just after few minutes you will study that we cannot diagnose abruption ultra by abruptia placenta by any ultrasound or any any investigation we can only diagnose the abruption placenta clinically so please focus here if you will understand the pathology then only you will understand the clinical symptoms spiral artery tears so there is 
when the arteries which are supplying the placenta if they will tear then they will be fetal distress isn't it isn't it where from where the uh, uh, fetus is getting nutrition fetus is getting nutrition from the placenta now the arteries which were supplying the placenta were supplying the nutrients were supplying the oxygen the one of the arteries of the many are teared so of course there will be fetal distress and this is one of the condition of of this is a one of the condition of of try one of the symptom of the triad of abruption placenta fetal distress now blood start collecting behind the placenta now because the spiral artery has teared blood will start uh, collecting behind the placenta now you tell me where this blood will go either the blood will remain inside or the blood will come outside or it can be mixed right if the blood comes outside it is known as revealed abruption placenta but because it will come slowly slowly this blood will be of the dark red color it will not be of the bright red color and if this blood remain inside then it will be known as concealed abruption if it is both it is mixed and when it is a concealed abruption you tell me ki what will happen to what will uh, happen to bp though bleeding is not coming out but of course the blood pressure will of course the blood pressure will fall hypotension will occur this spiral artery bleeding tear is not going to stop it will increase and increase and increase and increase okay okay it goes into the now this bl blood which is start collecting behind the placenta just behind the this is endometrium this is placenta just behind the endometrium here is myometrium now this blood at uh, it enters from the endometrium and goes into the myometrium myometrium is a muscle okay you you all have seen or experienced the bruise you know that whenever the blood uh, comes into the muscle okay okay so there is lot of pain that is why there in the patients of abruption placenta there is pain in the abdomen and that is why it is known as painful bleeding if the spiral artery will tear the blood will go into the myometrium the myometrium will uh, will cause pain to the abdomen and when we will touch that um, uh, uterus palpate that uterus it will be tender because a whole uterus myometrium is filled with blood okay okay this much now you know that all the triad you have clear first point of the triad is fetal distress second point of the triad is aph and the third point is the pain abdomen or the tender uterus okay now clot which is inside the myometrium if this clot can go into the mother circulation and then it will release thromboplastin and you all know when the thromboplastin will release the patient can go into dic right so it means this abruptio placenta patient can go into dic and die right this mother whose fetus is in distress this mother is soon go in go can go into die uh, will this mother will soon go into dic and will die so please terminate the pregnancy don't think of any other thing once you have diagnosed the abruptio placenta in the patient please terminate okay because once this clot goes into the systemic circulation then thromboplastin will release and then the mother will go into dic don't think of the fetus period of gestation whether the it is 28 weeks whether it is 32 weeks whether it is 34 weeks please don't let any mother to die because of dic when you diagnose abruptio placenta please at that very time terminate the pregnancy okay okay so that was all about the clinical triad 
that uh, painful bleeding lower abdomen pain and fetal distress the painful bleeding is uh, usually dark red in color because it is uh, it has come after clotting and then it can be it or uh, if it is concealed it can lead to hypotension lower abdomen pain uh, also cause uterus tender fetal distress and iud and because the myome in the myometrium there is collection of blood so the uh, fundal height increases okay fundal height increases now diagnosis as i already told you we cannot diagnose this by any ultrasound or any investigation it is only a clinical diagnosis that is why a lot of clinical questions are asked on the diagnosis of abruption placenta its treatment is immediate termination always normal delivery is preferred i have told you all many times in all those conditions where the patient can go into dic you have to prefer normal delivery over cesarean cesarean is not contraindicated if there is any obstetric indication you will go for cesarean but you always prefer normal delivery because in dic the normal delivery is good okay in because in the uh, patient is not in dic because in a patient with tendency to go into dic normal delivery should be preferred now as you all know this patient is having bleeding its spiral artery has teared if in the question they have said that vitals are deranged due to massive bleeding usually vitals they don't get deranged because as the patient gets uh, abruption patient gets pain and patient comes to the doctor okay but there are some unaware patients in india they don't come so or oh, and they tolerate the pain so if the patient comes to comes to you late patient might be in hypotensive shock so if the patient is in hypotensive shock please first resuscitate the patient ओके okay. अगर बीपी उसका कम आ रहा है प्लीज उसको फ्लूड्स और ब्लड दो फिर आप अपना टर्मिनेशन स्टार्ट करो अगर उसका बीपी चला गया पेशेंट चला जाएगा आप टर्मिनेट किसको करोगे नो डाउट इन एनी कंडीशन रिसेसिकेशन इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप ओके दिस स्टेप्स विच यू टोल्ड यू इमीडिएट टर्मिनेशन ऑल दिस थिंग्स दिस आर नॉट द स्टेप्स वेन द वाइटल्स आर डीरेंज ओके now what are the complications as i already told you that you have to the terminate the pregnancy whenever you diagnose a patient so most of the cases of abruption placenta fetus are premature so prematurity is the most common complication as there is blood in the myometrium so this uterus does not contract effectively and there is pph third complication is dic if someone asks you what is the most common cause of dic in obstetrics it is abruptus placenta and this was your fmg question okay shear and page uh, they uh, class we uh, classify they give a method of classifying the abruption placenta severity okay because sometimes patients come early sometimes patient comes late so they gave a method on the basis of clinical symptom as i already told you there are no methods by which we can there are no method by which we can diagnose this there are no investigation so shear and page these two doctors they gave us a method depending on the clinical severity uh, clinical symptom how to grade the severity of abruption okay so you have to just learn this name okay now let's go to a image this is the image of abruption uh, placenta uterus and this is also this uterus is also known as covlear uterus it is uh, maroon colored and it is full this here the myometrium is full filled with blood and uh, the one more term is used utero placental apoplexy apoplexy means anger gussa to uterus or placenta mein kab gus kab gussa hota hai to uterus or placenta mein abruption ke time pe gussa hota hai theek hai and this myometrium which is filled with clotted blood is known as covlear uterus okay
let us study the next thing placenta previa you all know previa means lower segment if the placenta is in the lower segment of the uterus it is placenta previa okay now in, because in early in the pregnancy the uterus is small in size so placenta is in the placenta is on the whole of the uterus okay it is also uh, low lying it is also up lying everywhere in the uterus there is a placenta on one side okay so but as with the time the uterus grows the placenta also grows and then the placenta is a uh, uh, real uh, location comes up that it is up now when the placenta uh, uh, when <coughs> but if the placenta is left behind near the os okay if the placenta does not move upward the placenta moves downward toward the os then it is known as placenta previa because now uh, placenta is above the cervical os now when we will do pv we will put the finger in the placenta so that is why pv is contraindicated in the case of placenta previa in a similar way if normal delivery will happen in this patient then the no, uh, normal vaginal delivery is too contraindicated because then this placenta will bleed a lot and then first the placenta will come out then the fetus will come out so whenever the placenta is in the low lying position we no, don't have to do pv we don't have to do the normal vaginal delivery then only the management is cesarean now you all know this uh, this uh, different types of placenta if it is more than 2 cm it is low lying placenta if it is less than 2 cm and near the margin of the cervical os it is type 2 marginal if it is half covering the cervical os it is partial if it is fully covering the cervical os it is complete okay so this is all but these days all this type 2 type 3 and type 4 are collectively known as placenta previa and the type 1 is known as low lying so in these days only two type of class placenta okay this old this was a old classification you all know this we will we are just jumping diagnosis on the ultrasound we can we can diagnose uh, this placenta previa on ultrasound and we can do the tvs we cannot do the pv we cannot do the normal vaginal delivery but we can do the but we can do the uh, tvs there is no problem because in the case of the tvs the probe is far behind okay now you all know that fetus kicks in placenta when the fetus kicks at placenta there is mild bleeding okay which stops spontaneously as the uterus contracts and the placenta again get bind okay you all know fetus kicks in placenta now this placenta is low lying okay now when the fetus will kick at the placenta as i told you similarly with that we cannot do the pv because when we will touch the placenta placenta will bleed right in the similar when fetus kicks it placenta sometimes there will be bleeding but because it is very mild kick and it is not so forceful kick fetus is uh, uh, usually a small uh, Uh, small case uh, uh, case is not so forceful so this uh, bleeding spontaneously stops because the uterus contracts in response to that bleeding and the placenta again bind that bleeding stops this bleeding is known as small bleeding which spontaneously stop this is known as warning hemorrhage okay and if period of gestation is less than 37 weeks if period of gestation is less than 37 weeks it is said not to terminate the pregnancy okay because you now know that it can be a warning hemorrhage it is not essential that it is going to be a, a massive bleeding okay because it will stop spontaneously so if the period of gestation is less than 37 weeks now you know that this bleeding is mostly a warning hemorrhage you are not going to terminate the uh, 
terminate the pregnancy if the period of gestation is lag because it will stop spontaneously and you can get the time okay so you are going to observe that patient you are going to admit that patient and you are going to manage that patient conservatively to see whether the bleeding stops or not stops okay now this conservative management uh, thing was given by mccafe johnson regime in this number one is bed rest uh, patient has to do bed rest number two is dexamethasone you will give the patient dexamethasone might be that bleeding does not uh, stops and then you have to give dexamethasone for 48 hours if the patient is a case of rh negative incompatibility you have to give ntd and at the last you have to give sedative so that patient to get relieved of the anxiety but no tocolysis as i already told you that bleeding stopped because the uterus contract and that's uh, the the point from where the bleeding was occurring that also contracts and the bleeding stop but if you will give tocolysis then the uterus will relax and it will bleed more so no tocolysis in the case of the in the case of the uh, placenta previa with bleeding okay so now there are some conditions where we don't have to do this conservating management or mccafe johnson regime if the fetus is in distress so why we were doing conservative management so that we can get the time for the fetus to mature because the uh, period of gestation was less than 37 weeks so we were getting the time for the fetus okay so but if the fetus in, is in distress it means the fetus will expire right so no need to no need to do conservative management if fetus is in distress it means that you have to do cesarean and if it is iud again you uh, don't need to do the intrauterine death then no need because we were extending the time for the fetus if it is iud then no advantage if the fetus is having congenital anomaly then again it is it is no advantage to increase the time okay and if the mother vitals are unstable it means that mother is continuously bleeding then of course you have to choose between fetus and the mother uh, then of course you will choose the mother if the fetus uh, if there is massive bleeding then again you have to go for go for uh, mother survival and you have to do cesarean okay and if again the period of gestation is more than 37 weeks then again no need it is already a term fetus right do the cesarean even at the warning hemorrhage do the cesarean okay in transverse if it is a transverse lie then you can give conservative management right so conservative management is basically for the fetus uh, if it is a uh, premature fetus okay now you tell me that uh, there is a painless bleeding occur so you have a suspicion of uh, placenta previa if at 32 weeks of gestation painless bleeding occur okay so you have suspicion in mind that this is placenta previa okay now you tell me what is your management of bleeding placenta previa patient if that patient has no ultrasound patient came to you at 32 weeks and patient had no ultrasound as usually unaware patient comes like that way only or patient come in panic and they don't come up with ultrasound they don't carry their done ultrasound okay now patient come you with uh, painless bleeding and 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 you have a suspicion of placenta previa you know that in placenta previa there is painless bleeding and uh, what you will be your first step so first step will of course if the patient vitals are deranged then resuscitation is the first step but you will confirm your diagnosis by ultrasound okay if the patient don't, don't have ultrasound in hand then you will confirm your diagnosis at by ultrasound okay there is one more way to confirm your diagnosis by doing pv in ot but that is the that is a less preferred method and it is only done in the patients who are at term more than 37 weeks okay because if it is a placenta previa then we have to do cesarean and it is more than 37 weeks but in every case whether it is more than 37 weeks or less than 37 weeks always ultrasound is preferred more 
okay and um, just uh, i am telling you that pv can be done in ot and we will feel the placenta and uh, if the placenta bleeds then it is placenta previa and simultaneously we will do a the cesarean okay we will prepare all the ot anesthetist will be there simultaneously we can do the cesarean and we can make a diagnosis but just i want to tell you at after 37 week this is also one way to diagnose your patient if you don't have ultrasound but no doubt ultrasound is a non invasive non bleeding tendency method and it is the best okay so that is it now in the uh, second last slide if the placenta is low lying then you can do normal delivery if the placenta is marginal partial or complete you have to do cesarean okay next is vasa previa vasa previa you all know placenta previa means placenta in the lower segment vasa previa means vessels in the lower segment now umbilical cord is made up of three vessels two arteries and one veins okay left vein is left you all know that now all these vessels they are packed in water jelly when these three vessels are packed in water jelly it is known as umbilical cord if they are not packed in water jelly then they are not known as umbilical cord they are known as vessels now what is vasa previa vasa previa means vessels are there but no water jelly is there that is what it is found in velamentous placenta water jelly ends far behind water jelly ends in midway and the there is full exposure of vessels okay now when in this condition in this condition when the vessels are uh, when the vessels are exposed you are seeing that here this is the packed in water jelly now here these are exposed vessels okay now this fetus head will put the pressure on the vessels and these vessels will bleed okay now when these vessels are not packed in water jelly some fetus head or fetal any part will put the pressure then these vessels will bleed right and when these fat vessels will bleed then of course fetus can die this is not a maternal blood this is the fetal blood okay so how you will diagnose this case patient will come to you with aph first of all this is a very rare patient okay on ultrasound there was no placenta previa on the uh, when you touch the patient it was also not painful bleeding uterus was also not tender now you have in mind ki yeah this can be a case of vasa previa okay so because you know that third reason of aph is vasa previa okay bleeding now what you do you don't know whether the this is fetal blood or maternal blood which is the which is coming out but you know one property of the fetal blood that the fetal blood is resistant to alkali and uh, alkali and acid both so what you did you get the alkali media and you take that blood and you throw that alkali media okay if it is fetus blood then its color will not change if it is mother blood because mother blood is is sensitive to alkali and acids so it will change the color okay if there is no color change then it means it is the fetal blood you have to take the patient you have to rush and do the cesarean okay but if it is not fetal blood blood it is mother blood it means it is a case of placenta previa or abruptio okay because fetus has is a very small uh, bachcha so you, if the fetus uh, will bleed soon the fetal will die so you have to rush it is a damn emergency was a previa is a damn emergency you have to quickly diagnose what uh, how the Uh, what blood it is whether it is fetal or maternal once fetal blood game you have to emergency do the cesarean that's all about the aph hope you like my video please like share and subscribe my channel it will help me a lot in the teaching journey thanks a lot